Roger and Pete. When it comes to people truly worthy of a term like living legends, the fact of the matter is there's almost nobody left on the planet more worthy than the two of you. It was your musical innovations throughout the late 60s and 70s that led to so many breakthroughs all across rock and roll. And your recordings paved the way for everything from glam to punk to metal. That's just a fact. I mean, you guys managed to do something almost nobody else has done in the entire history of music. You've made a record that became so iconic that even saying the word Tommy instantly brings to mind images and sounds relating to the record you made. That is the magic of music in its most clear and pure form. And let's not forget anthems like Baba O'Reilly, Magic Bus, and My Generation, which is the type of song that will never age. And in every era, new fans are going to find the perfection in that tune and the spirit in the singing. But uh, how to say this nicely? Stop? Please? For the sake of the legend that you've built, for the greatness of all of the songs that you've recorded, please just walk away before you do more damage than you already have. You know that whole let's not make music anymore thing that you basically did after Keith Moon passed away, save those two disasters of albums? Yeah, that was a really good idea, but apparently you couldn't leave well enough alone. I mean, believe me, I've seen my fair share of outright embarrassing performances in my lifetime. As I've been in and I've watched so many bands play early shows where they just couldn't get it together. I've seen bands have bad nights, and I've seen groups that for whatever reason just shouldn't be on stage. But I don't know if I've seen anything as awkwardly uncomfortable as seeing the two of you play at the 2010 Super Bowl halftime show. When it comes to that night, Roger, I can't say it in any other way. You pretty much sounded like everybody's drunk uncle after one too many whiskey standing in the living room using his glass as a microphone. I'm sorry, it was that bad. I mean, think about it. Do you know why Robert Plant has only done one Led Zeppelin reunion after all of these decades? It's because he knows those notes just aren't in his range anymore. And those songs lose a ton when you decide to play them in a lower key. They just do. I guess it's gonna come as a shock to you, but you just can't hit the notes at 65 that you could at 25. I know, it's unthinkable, but it's reality. Leave it to cover bands and karaoke superstars to keep those sort of memories alive. You're just starting to replace all of our great memories with these awkward old age home style memories. It was pretty obvious to all of us that you were running out of steam about eight minutes into your 12 minute performance. And when an oxygen tank becomes a required part of your tour writer, I'm sorry, it's time to hang up the microphone. And Pete, don't think I'm gonna let you off that hook for that little stunt you pulled in Florida a few months ago. I noticed. We all noticed. The world of music tends to notice when one of the all-time greatest guitarists throws a hissy fit on stage and then does the unthinkable. Don't get me wrong, we all know that you've had hearing issues since Keith decided to blow up his drums behind you on the Smothers Brothers show all those years ago. And you've been a superb champion for fans and musicians alike to protect their hearing over the decades. But when you walked off stage a few months ago at that show and said that it was because the music was too loud? I mean, come on, if that wasn't a sign that your retirement is well past due, I don't know what's going to be. I'll put it simply, you guys were once rightfully given the title of the loudest band in the world, and now the music's too loud for you. Need I say more? <laughs>